Hi, this is Captain Rob. I'm your chief pilot for the Chowd Air Virtual Rotary Clam Chowder Delivery Service serving the Bella Coola area. I'm putting together a series of short videos on uh, some of the technology that I've put in place to help me fly in VR. Uh, certainly if you've flown in VR, uh, especially in helicopters, uh, it really helps with the immersion. It helps judging distances and uh, relationship to other objects and really just uh, makes for an incredible experience when flying. Uh, so this first video, we're just going to have a quick look at uh, the technology I've implemented, and then in subsequent videos, we're going to go much deeper into uh, how it all works. But I want to give you kind of a, just a quick taste test of what's happening. So I'm going to start the video here uh, looking at the Bell 407. Uh, here we are, beautiful Bella Coola. I'm going to uh, kind of pop inside the cockpit for a second and talk about if you're flying uh, typically in, in 3D, uh, like with the 3D panel, the developers sometimes have implemented some extra menu systems for you. So here's a typical one in the 407. We can go in here and customize certain objects like the, uh, if we go to the external uh, area here, we can you know, adjust how the drawers work, uh, if we want to add floats or subtract them, those kind of things. And that's fantastic, but typically this menu system only works in the 3D panel and does not translate over to VR. So when we get into the VR space, we're missing, uh, sometimes with manufacturers, quite a few things that we could be able to do with the aircraft uh, if we were just flying in, in typical 3D space. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop over to virtual reality, and then we're going to come back into the cockpit, and I'm going to show you what I've implemented to give me some of this functionality back again. So here we are now inside the helicopter in virtual reality, and you see I've got great access to all the switches and all the gauges, and of course great visibility all around the aircraft for flying. Uh, however, when I look back at the dashboard, you'll see the upper uh, right corner here, if I use my VR manipulator, I no longer get the extra menu uh, that comes up normally in the 3D uh, panel. So I've kind of essentially lost all of that capability that was available to me there. But what I've done is I've put together a piece of hardware, which is an Elgato Stream Deck, and I'll show you that to you a bit later in the video, uh, with some software to actually bring that Stream Deck into VR space. So I've just launched it here, and you can now see that I have uh, all of the buttons on the Stream Deck are available to me, and I can actually take this and move it anywhere inside the cockpit that I like. Uh, and I'll show you later how I actually put that in the cockpit and how you can have control over that. And now I've mapped a bunch of, you know, there's physical buttons on the Stream Deck, uh, which I have sitting on my knee, and those are mapped here visually in front of me so I can see what they are. So I'm just going to pop um, back out of the helicopter here. It might make it easier to see uh, some of these functions. So in the very top row here, you'll see I've got the pilot door, co-pilot door, right rear and left rear. And if I hit those buttons, I can just pop open any of those doors, right? Very simple to control, just at the touch of a button. Below that, you'll see I have remove doors and place doors. So again, a single button, boom, doors are all gone. So if I want to be flying with the wind in my face, easy to do, and one button, and they're back in again. And the very bottom row here is equipping the floats and removing them. So you can see we already have them equipped here. If I hit the remove button, boom, they're gone, as easy as that, one button. And then the third button over is actually inflate them. So if I'm out over water and run into an emergency, I could just at the tap of a button, pop those floats out, and also deflate them again, right? So they're just gone. And if you've actually used these before, you know that's not quite as simple to do from inside the cockpit while you're flying. And the very last button here on the main page is the startup uh, button. And that takes me into a secondary uh, group of buttons. And essentially, it's a, like a folder. And you can nestle multiple folders deep uh, to get where you want to go. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm basically at the beginning of this customization. I'm sure I can go much deeper. So on this page, the very top one there is remove before flight. So if you watch the helicopter, one button removes all of those tags and, uh, and hold downs. So I can just then start up the helicopter. On the very bottom row, the left-hand one is actually start the engines, right? So I don't have a button on my physical collective, so I can actually just press this button when the time comes to actually start uh, the kickover. Uh, right next to that, of course, is the GPU. A quick on and off if I need that. And the very last one at the bottom row is the horn mute. So you'll know on the 407 there's a horn uh, on the main panel that uh, will go off. Even if you're, you know, say, rolling off to idle when you uh, come in for a landing and that horn goes off, that's a quick way to just hit that button without having to grab the VR manipulator to, to go and do that. And the last part of this is the uh, checklist. So if I go uh, pop back into the cockpit here and I start up the checklist, you'll see that if you've got the X checklist uh, in place, I now have the entire checklist in front of me. 
And so these four buttons control that. So the third button over will just take me to the next checklist and so on and back again. And then the second button is just the, the actual checking the boxes. So if I'm actually going through the checklist, I can just tap on that and that will go through and you know, I can really follow along the checklist completely accurately uh, for my startup from cold and dark. And then I just tap the first button again and the entire checklist goes away. So that's just a quick overview. And again, these are just the controls for the 407. I'm going to have a video that will go over all the helicopters I've mapped and show you all of the capabilities I've mapped in so far. And what I want to do now is just we're going to pop out of the simulator and into the real world. And I'm going to show you what the Stream Deck looks like and how I'm using it for this purpose. So let's finish up the video just talking a little bit about the hardware. So this is the Stream Deck from Elgato, uh, and it's designed really for gamers so that if you're doing, say, streaming, you could have a one-tap to start your Twitch stream or start the OBS stream. You could have a one-tap for sending a tweet, that kind of thing. Um, and there's actually a couple of different uh, versions of this. Uh, Elgato's released uh, a six-button version, which I don't think is enough buttons to actually be practical. We, we definitely want more things to be controllable uh, right at single button access. And they've released uh, recently one called the Stream Deck XL, which is 32 buttons, which I think is just way too many buttons. So the thing to remember is that in uh, I'm wearing my headset in full VR, and what I'm seeing on the screen in VR is what's related to what's sitting on my knee. So when I need to open the pilot door, in VR I can see that that's the second button in the top row, so I feel down and I go to the second button in the top row and hit the button. So it needs to be a, an easy relation, and having 5 by 3 is very simple to know, you know which row to go to and which button to press uh, to correlate that into the VR space. The next thing I did to make this even more immersive is that I went to Thingiverse and printed out this uh, lovely 3D holder for it. So I can then just run the cable through here. Uh, and then what I did is I went to my local aircraft uh, location, you know, a sales location, and, and bought a kneeboard. And so now the Stream Deck just actually sits right here, uh, sits on my knee. So it's never moving anywhere. I know exactly where it is. Uh, it's easy to find every time. And uh, it works fantastic. So that's the end of this video. In the next video, we'll get much more into the software it takes to tie all of this uh, hardware uh, together. And I'm um, looking forward to talking to you more about it then. Thanks.